We are recording. How are you doing today? As a professional, you know what I'm saying? I'm used to being able to see myself, you know what I mean? The great Bill Baez told me one time, you know, always be aware of all things. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, As more professional we get, um, you're probably not going to be able to see yourself. There's going to be someone on the other end of the camera who will have a screen who will make sure that, you know, we're looking as good as God created us to be. I'm not talking about how it looks. I'm just talking about being able to see, you know, just being able to, you know, if I had a teleprompter there, I'd be a real teleprompter, you know what I'm saying? If this is helping me focus on my, you know what I mean? I, I would be, not not necessarily, you know, I'd, ha- I'd have a reference point. No, no. At, it. at least you would like to have yeah. some sort of monitor so you can kind of see where you're at. Exactly. See your hand gestures, exactly. make sure you're not doing anything offensive. Yeah. Point you know out the middle finger at people. Yeah. yeah. Why, like, is, why does your, like my finger. I'm double jointed. So you're doing that on purpose. You can no, no, you no. can straighten your finger out and do that. Like that's as straight as it gets. I can see. Like I'm double jointed. Now my fingers are crooked. But I'm that's a, from being, you know. I might have uh some damage from years or what you call it, but I mean this one is broken. I can't straight that's I can't straighten that one out, but that one yeah. I mean that's straight as I can't I can make it go straight like that, I guess. Yeah, the pinky broke in over hill, right? So it's like fat down here and mm-hmm. then it yeah. But you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I can still block shots. <laughs> uh, man, it's been a minute, bro. You it's know? been an eventful, eventful couple of weeks too, man. A lot of stuff has happened, man. We ain't talked since uh, before the Super Bowl. That you know deba- what I'm talking about? That debauchery, debauchery, debauchery. Hobby. Oh, so you you ain't like it? I think it was. I thought it was a good game up until the last minute and forty eight seconds. I mean, was it a good game? It was a good game. It was a decent game. It was a, it was a competitive game. Yeah, competitive. Yeah, competitive. you know, competitive. It wasn't like a blowout, you know what I'm saying? Uh, both teams seemed equally matched. Both defenses seemed equally outmatched. No, nah, I think second half, man, Eagles defense fell apart, bro. They fell apart or, or, or the Kansas City's offense just come to life? No, no, they fell apart. Man. Like they couldn't – they for some reason they couldn't guard that little like – to the corner of the end zone. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. Like, if, I mean, a lot of times we get into, I get into conversations or get into, you know, coaching conversations with, you know, other football, basketball, even baseball people, right? And there's a difference between playing the game, understanding the game, and coaching the game, right? And there's, there's nuances to coaching that you can see, oh, he got out coached. Like, Andy Reid out coached. Oh, Andy Green and Benjamin, they out schemed them. It wasn't like they did something spectacular where somebody caught the ball with one hand falling away or somebody did something. No, nah, man, we ran a play to check y'all temperature and y'all playing this way. Oh, y'all doing that? Okay, watch this. We're going to run the same play over here and pull this linebacker, linebacker over here and run this dude wide open. And y'all don't have, y'all got our coach, you know what I'm saying? And Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy definitely out schemed and out coached the, the Eagles in the second half. Yeah. I saw a conspiracy out there about the field. They were complaining about slippage on the field. Yeah. Why is all this pain out here? Yeah. I want to say it was real grass this time. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so the the groundsman, the guy who was in charge of the field for yeah. the NFL Super Bowl, yeah, works out of Kansas City. Yeah, so he's their he's their groundskeeper. Yeah, field keeper. Yeah, and they talked about how uh, the Chiefs might have had a slight advantage because they came out, they never changed their cleats, and the Philadelphia Eagles team, they had to change their cleats multiple times. And then they even did a breakdown about how many times Eagles defensive players slipped versus Chiefs defensive players. And I think it was like it was like uh forty something percent mm-hmm. of the Eagles players were slipping on defense opposed to like thirteen or fourteen percent of Kansas City Chiefs. Do you think knowing that grounds person working with them on a on a weekly basis and knowing what length cleats I need to have in played a part? No. No? Okay. Because it happens every year. It's the same thing every year. Do you think uh okay. the, the the process the process of making the field goes far beyond one day. It's a two year process of making the field to making it's a two year process 
of making the field for the Super Bowl. So even if he is from Kansas City, he would have to know two years ago that my team's playing. Secondly, the paint on the field is the issue. It ain't the field, it's the paint on the field. And every year they put paint on the field or they do something like this is the same issue every year. They, they do something to the field. And then thirdly, Rihanna is more of the reason why the field had issues more than the paint because of all the, that has delayed the game starting. I mean, they had delayed the halftime because of all the extra they put on the field for the for the whatever they did. And then afterwards, you saw slip you saw more slippage after halftime than you did in the first half. Well, Jalen Hurst changed his cleats in the first quarter. His fault. Like a lot of them changed their cleats within that first quarter. They fault. Secondly, I think they told I think I read <clears throat> I didn't read this. I I was listening to this on Pat McAfee's show. I think the Fields guy was there. Uh, for six months prepping that field leading up to the uh, the the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's two years. They grow it for a year and a half. Well, grow it for a year, and then they do some other stuff for like six months, and then they prep the field for six months. So it's a two year process. So, like, I guess I mean, nah. Oh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not debating that. I don't know. Yeah, either. I don't know, either way it goes. Well, they, hell, they didn't prep the field and and. and NRG for two years, that bullshit ass debacle. That was the same field the Texans played on. Which one? The uh, Super Bowl. Okay, so it's the indoor field. That's why. Well, it's I different. mean, it's the same thing in, in Arizona. The only difference is uh, so the Texans would bring it in on pallets and put the pallets together. Yeah. Well, the Arizona Cardinals Stadium, they have something built in and it's kind of fire too. The whole fucking side opens up and they can slide the entire field out and slide it back in. Are you sure they didn't prep the field for two years for the Texans? I would double check on that. Nah, because it, it was the same bullshit ass complaints that everybody was complaining about that palletized, put the field together shit, and you can see the fucking creases in the field. It was the worst field to play on. Same field that fucked up Davion Clowney's knee, the same field that fucked up the punter's knee. And so, I mean, I don't sound like it's not the field, it sounds like it's the, the, the un, well, it's the field per se, but I don't, like, so when you're talking about fields, the, the bottom under the field is as important as the top of the field. So if you have space under there, that's how you get those those gaps because you'll have, you know, you know what I'm saying? Well, see, how the Texans grow there, because this, this shit is like a, a, not every stadium is like this, but mm -hmm. some of them is like a blended sod. So mm -hmm. uh, in Houston, they take it out in pieces, I guess similar to how you would piece, piece together a basketball court because they do piece together some basketball courts in certain yeah, places. So, yeah. Well, here, from my understanding, they it's on pallets. They grow the grass on pallets, and then they piece it together mm -hmm. like a puzzle. Yeah, That's how they get it in. Well, Arizona, when they built that stadium, they wanted to be able to fully grow their grass outside without pulling the field apart. Mm -hmm. So that that whole field literally slides out mm -hmm. and slides in. So it's it's grown like a normal, I guess, field you could have outside, and they just slide that bitch inside. It's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty fire, actually. Yeah, I would, have, I would I would have to do some more research on the on the Texans field on how it worked for the Super Bowl because if they if they did the same process that they do for the regular Texans, then that's on the NFL. <laughs> it's on the NFL, not the teams. I mean, are they growing it somewhere and flying it in, or am I just growing a field for two years and saying don't touch it? That's that sounds like extreme. I mean, that might be it. They got money. Yeah. They got a bunch, a bunch of money. A bunch of money, so I'm not down there. It just sounds right. kind of extreme. If it was me, I would just use the field that's there, and you know, hey, paint that shit, put them Super Bowl logos on there, take that trash ass Arizona logos off. Boo, you niggas can make it to the Super Bowl anyway. Oh, I'm you know. I'm 100 percent sure that they, they they grew it somewhere else though. 100 percent sure about that part. Like I said, it's a two year process. It's a two year process, and it's always been a two year process for the last 20 some years. No, that's cool. I'm not. Uh, what else? So yeah, I just like I said, they got us coach. They got a coach, man. That's that's what part that I ain't like. It's like, dang, how you get to this point, man? And it, it really just proves a lot of points that I say about the human element. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Go ahead, man. You can you can you can do all these things, man. You can have, but the human element is so unpredictable, man. Which was the human element this time? And they got all coached. <laughs> like you 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 quote unquote the bet like. The Eagles. You lost by three, so I don't know if you got a coach that oh, bad. Oh, man. You was up. You was up. You really, really, you should have been up by by, by 20 at halftime. But you was up at halftime, and they literally, like, I know you've seen the break. They literally ran the same play 
four times, and two of them times was literally dummy plays to get to see. Just like that's like boxing. I'm gonna throw a jab and see what you do. Oh, he ain't ducking the jab. Oh, he's doing it to the jab. Wow, pow and score. I mean, it is good coaching. If I can run, if I can run several look, if I can run several different plays out of the same look, and you don't know what's coming, that's great coaching. Yes, it, it was the same. Like it was a check play to check to see what you were doing. And oh, this is what y'all doing. So I ran the same exact play again and ran that same and just threw the ball here. And then the same thing again. Oh, y'all still doing that with y'all linebackers? Okay, boom, watch this. Boom. And that was the from the analysts that I've, I've listened to and from watching the game. I, didn't, I don't know, watch the second half. But I, I watched it. I listened to the first couple quarters and watched the second half. But uh, they said the same thing. They exposed the, Eagle, the Eagles linebackers weren't good enough. That was the – that was the the, the – the, get the whole per se in their defense was their mm-hmm. linebackers, and that's what they exposed. And that's what, that's when they, if you look at the scores, it was on linebackers. Okay. Yeah, and is Travis Kelsey that good? Travis Kelsey is good. Let me ask the question: Is Travis Kelsey any better than Shannon Sharp was? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think hard now before you answer. Mm-hmm. Is Travis Kelsey? Because they're they're, probably, call, they're calling Kelsey the goat. They're calling Kelsey the goat. Tight end. He has the numbers. If you do, if you're just going by numbers, he does have the numbers. Numbers always lie, though. Ah, uh, that's not true. That's 100 percent true. I can't agree with that. So he has the numbers. Yeah. And but the numbers don't mean nothing, though. The numbers do mean something. What they mean? The, he he produced. But okay. if numbers don't mean anything, then why do they keep stats? So numbers mean something. No, no, no. But I'm saying numbers mean something relative to the time period, right? So you think Shannon, Shannon Sharp wouldn't have had them numbers if they threw the ball as much as they do? Like, just, just taking all that out of it, in 1990, the middle of the field was different. Like, you couldn't go across the middle of the field because the rules were different, right? Well, that's why Shannon Sharp, to me, don't get the credit he should because Shannon Sharp was doing all of that shit then. Even in a more run-heavier run NFL he still put up numbers. That's what I'm saying. So you so you comparing somebody who was playing with 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 a handicap versus somebody who's playing with a handicap in their favor. Like Travis Kelsey, you can come across the middle of the field knowing that the worst thing gonna happen, I might get hit hard, right? And knowing they're not going to my knees too, knowing that, that these two things are illegal. Whereas Shannon Sharp come across the middle of the field knowing they could take my head off or I might take my knees out, and it's legal. So yeah, but I mean. What you mean? I mean, numbers count. So if that's the case, so okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. If I go about that logic, yeah. I mean, you believe Brady's the goat, right? Yeah. I've heard you call him the goat. Yeah, he's he's the greatest quarterback that we've we've seen. But in it's, our it's only it's only for numbers. But what if no, I it's talk? not? It's what for else? win. He didn't have a report. It came. It's for wins and it's for it's for intangibles because Brady's numbers ain't ain't out the roof compared to what Michael Vick compared to uh some of the other guys. He he. He hit, what eighty seven yards running the two balls. He was he he, but he game managed and he made the right place at the right time. His first three two balls wasn't on his arm. Wasn't they Benetarian wins? One of them was defense. One of them was running game. Uh, a few with the kicker. I'm saying that the win. The, what I'm saying is he does have the stats though. No, nah, not not all well, time. No, he has stats because he played so long. If you look at a comparison of stats, and the only other quarterback that you truly can say is the goat outside of Brady would be Montana. But even when you put up Montana stats versus Brady stats, his stats are slightly better, large part because he played longer. So if you look at the stats, what do you tell? Brady you had about? Brady has the stats. To show he's the goat. You're talking about stats pass, as in I'm talking about like pass, what, numbers. Listen, or, listen. Yeah. Pass percentage, total yards, receiving. I mean, passing touchdowns to interceptions ratio. Of course, he has the rings. Of course, he has the accolades. So yeah, but if you look at yards, touchdowns, interceptions, uh, QBR, pass percentage, all of that, it's top tier. It's 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 the highest, and he's done it for the longest. But what? No, but I'm saying, but why? Okay. So this is a preference to an individual. So I'm saying because you're telling me that he has these some of these numbers as far as the 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 mass the the amount of numbers. But if I was great for eight, okay, let's put let's put staying in football. Staying, I'm not going too far, but Barry Sanders versus Emma Smith, right? Barry Emma Smith is, is smashing Barry Sanders in, in, in stats. 
Yeah. Because he played that long. Yeah. But do you think that Barry Sanders is not a better running back than Emma Smith? I think longevity has to matter as well. No, I'm asking you, do you, 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 you I answered that question. So you're saying, saying that, I think longevity has to matter as well. So if you ask me who was the better back, yeah. NFL wise, team wise, I'm gonna tell you it was Emmitt Smith. You get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. So Well you, well, you well, get out of here. Right, you give me a tangible reason or tangible proof that Barry Sanders is better. Because Barry Sanders in his ten years, in his ten years, he was better than Emma Smith. All those years they played together, one. Two, um, Barry Sanders didn't have some of those um, some of those uh, uh, intangibles as far as, I'm not intangible, some of those advantages that Emma Smith had. Emma Smith had one of the greatest O-lines in offensive history, Is right? Is that his fault? I didn't say it's his fault, but that's a fact. So you can't emit certain facts and then play, okay, well, saying that Barry Sanders – was the greatest running back of all time is is saying that if you put that production that he had behind that other production that the production meaning the the line and the and the talent that because you, you can't you couldn't zoom in on Emma Smith for the Cowboys because you got to worry about Michael Urban you got to worry about, about Harper you got to worry about uh, the tight end you got to worry about they even had Moose come out the backfield. You got Troy Aikman. You got this. You got the All Star cast, and you have a defense that's standing up. Barry Sanders ain't had none of that. So Barry that, Sanders had so, so. And so because of that, if I'm telling you, I'm looking at stats. Emmitt Smith is a better running back than Barry Sanders was. He did it for a long period of time. He has the yardage. He has the touchdowns. He has the rings. Emmitt Smith is a better back. You so you you're just saying that if I'm just going if I got to go by the black and white what's in front of us but but that, but what I'm saying is you're 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 what you're saying is not incorrect but it's a kind of short sighted and small and what you're looking at that's like me saying it's not short sighted it small. is if that's the case then Warren Moon's the goat Warren Moon's the best quarterback to play Matter he might, of fact, he might I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna tell you why if we're gonna if we're gonna go by what could have happened yeah then Warren Moon is the goat best quarterback to ever play because of the four years he had playing Canada. So if you take just the years he didn't play in Canada alone, okay, give him a couple more years, yeah, he he blows everybody's numbers out the water probably. Now if you take those four years that he had to play in Canada because they weren't allowing black quarterbacks to play in the NFL as starting quarterbacks, one hundred percent he'd be the goat. Matter of fact, if I give Warren Moon the I don't New know England if they were Patriots, allowing black quarterbacks to play, why did Warren Moon have to go to Canada and play four years? Warren Moon was one of the best quarterbacks coming out of college when he came out. Because Warren Moon went to Canada because to play four years because they were blackballing black quarterbacks. Not all of that's, them. That's that's fact, bro. Uh, well, who went? What year did Doug Williams? Doug Williams. Hey, hold on, you cut Doug, me off. Let me finish. Doug Williams. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead. No, you go ahead, bro. What year did Doug Williams win the Super Bowl? It was before Warren Moon got. I, in the but what year was it? Before he got in the league. It was what 87, 88? I'm not sure what year it was. Okay, Warren Moon came in the league in what ninety something, or came graduated from Washington. What year? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe four or five years after Doug Williams. Sure. Were there the were there starting quarterbacks in NFL before? Um, I mean, after Doug Williams. I name them. I don't know. There were. There were. I don't know off the top of my head. But I, but I don't know off the top of my head. But there were. Who? You got me? a phone. Google. Oh, I can Google that. Okay, let me see. Uh, but, Last time you told us to Google something, you was one hundred percent sure it was correct, and you were one hundred percent false. I'm finna, okay. Now, I'm not telling you there weren't. I remember Doug Williams. Then I remember, I remember Warren Moon. I remember Randall Cunningham. I remember that class. Uh, let me see who else I remember coming in. But that's beyond the point. What I'm saying is, if you want to do that, then yeah, Warren Moon to go. Or Marino's to go. Marino doesn't get hurt and has weapons that, uh, I don't know, Brady had or, or style system Brady played in, he'll be the go. Well, the first black quarterback in the NFL was 1923. Let's start there. But um, I mean, come on. Let's let's not let's not argue semantics. I didn't say that there weren't black quarterbacks in the league. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me see. Uh, it's Black History Month, bro. It's yeah. like a whole. It's literally like a whole doc you can go watch that explains this whole situation about Warren Moon, why he had to go to Canada and play for four years, Vince, all of that shit. Vince Evans. Uh, okay, Warren Moon. Cunningham, Reggie Collier, Doug Williams was 87. I wish Collier, Warren Moon. What is this? Okay, yeah. So Warren Moon, Doug Williams, Vince Evans, Rodney Pete, um, Jeff Blake, Dave Mays, Jay, there's Parnell Dickinson, JJ. Warren, they wanted Warren Moon to be a wide receiver because it was racist in, in the in the in the um 
in the context. But going back to the the the, num- the numbers thing, what I'm saying is, what you're saying because I have these numbers, these 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 gaudy numbers by um by by long, longevity qualifies me to be better than somebody who had gaudy numbers in a shorter span span of time, like Emmett Smith. And I'm just saying longevity matters. It matters, but then the same breath, like how many years? But in, in fact, like okay, how many? Fa- I'm asking this: How many things do you take out of account when you're talking about what matters? Because now, if longevity matters, how many years was Emmett Smith playing for nothing when he was playing? When he was just getting eight yard, eight, four yards to carry, just to, just to, to to put numbers up. I feel like Arizona year, bro. He had two years in Arizona, but also yeah. some some years in Dallas. He was playing for nothing. The uh, first three years, what do you mean? Uh, what the you first, mean the three first three years in his in his career, he was playing for nothing. They was they was like get they the fuck out of here. They bro. ain't win a game the whole year. Get out of here, bro. If right? That, well, shit. Am many, I right? How, how much success? Time out. If Barry Sanders is so great, which Barry Sanders is great, yeah. How much success did the Detroit Lions have then? If, if you're gonna if you're gonna say he was playing for nothing for his first two or three seasons, yeah. Because the Cowboys won winning, yeah. Then, okay. What the fuck was Barry Sanders doing? Because they obviously wasn't winning in Detroit either. But I, I, I'm so I, it's the same, so that's a wash. But I'm, 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 I'm telling, I'm asking you, do you think that the years? Because Barry Sanders saw some playoffs. Barry, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure his team was seven and eight or eight and eight or in that range. But in the same, like once again, when you talk about that, you have to, you have to include that Barry Sanders has Scott Mitchell for a quarterback for a long time. Barry Sanders didn't have no defense. Emma Smith had Hall of Famers all around him. So some of the, some of the pressures of, hey, when I hand this thing off or if I like when I fake this hand off to Barry Sanders, then the defense can't react the same to Barry Sanders as they can to Emma Smith because of Michael Irvin. Because if you're, of if you're I, asking I, me, mean? if you're asking me who was the better talented back, yeah, I would tell you it's Barry Sanders. If you're asking me who was the better back over a period of time, I'm gonna tell you it's Emma Smith. Oh, so you're oh, so you're saying so? Uh, if you're saying that, if you're saying that, talent is talent. So you, no, let me finish. Talent, <laughs> talent, talent is talent. I can tell you that Tracy McGrady was more talented than LeBron James, right? I believe so. Or I can tell you Tracy McGrady was more talented. Yeah. Or a prime example. You can say Brandon Roy yeah. was more talented yeah. than James Harden. You could say that. No, nah, so. no, let me finish. You can make the argument to say that Brandon Roy was more talented than James Harden. How so? I'm asking you how so. I'm going by talent wise. Let's Ta- say potential. What, what, yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro. Stop trying to argue semantics. I'm not. You, t- you, you just told me this guy was more talented. I'm like, time the, out, time out. Yeah. First off, first off, yeah. let's, let's keep it a buck. Keep it a buck. Yeah. We're talking about example purposes only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The argument that you're arguing is Barry Sanders and Emmitt Smith. I ain't here to argue nobody's more okay, talented okay, okay, yeah, than James yeah, yeah, Harden yeah, okay. because that you think James Harden. Go ahead, go ahead. I said for example purposes, okay, I okay, could argue okay, 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 that okay. Brandon Roy you can. was more talented you than can. James Harden. You can't. But when you look at the numbers, you got to say what James Harden was the better player over longevity. It's not Brandon Roy, Roy's okay. fault that he didn't have cartilage in his knees, so his career got cut short. But over a period of time, James Harden had the the longer has the longer career, has put up the bigger numbers because of that being some of it his longevity. It's the same thing with Emmitt Smith and Barry Sanders. If you ask me who was the more talented back, I would tell you it's Barry Sanders, probably Thurman Thomas, then Emmitt Smith. But who had the longevity and the number the longevity and the numbers? It's Emmett Smith. Some of it could be Emmett Smith's running style. Shit. He had blockers, and once he got past the blockers, linebackers, a solo linebacker not taking down Emmett Smith. A, a DB is not taking down Emmett Smith. I, I, I guess, I, I wish, I wish, so what I hear you saying is that based on longevity, he's better. I said based on the overall career and longevity has to be part of it. Same thing with Tom Brady. You can't say that, well, Montana is the GOAT. Well, Brady's only better because he played longer. Well, Brady's longevity played a part in him being better than Montana because he was able to play longer. Okay, one question. Same thing with LeBron. Hold on, one you, question. Go ahead. One question. If I said, "Hey, man, oh, you got, you got, you, we got, we, we're in football heaven. <laughs> or we're a football godland. Mm-hmm. Everybody's at their prime. Yep. You get to pick one back to be on your team. Are you picking Emma Smith or Barry Sanders?" I got to pick one back to be on my team. Is it a complete team? You got to pick one back to be on your team. That's it. We, it's, all we're doing is picking backs right now. You can, you can pick one back. Who are you picking? Earl Barry Campbell. 
But if you're not picking Emma Smith. I said I'm picking Earl Campbell. But you're not picking Emma Smith, though. Yeah. Because you ask me any running Okay, okay. So you didn't tell me out the two. You said any running back. Okay, watch this. So you proving my point though. I'm not proving your well, point. I, because what's the point? What's my point? The point, point? The point, you, the point yet. you were trying to make was that Barry Sanders was better than Emmett no, Smith. No, but I made my point point. My point is, my point is, when you say this person is better and had a better career, that's one conversation. But the better back, the better back is the one you're gonna pick. I'm not gonna pick the I'm not gonna pick you to say if I wanna win. I'm not saying, well, over a period of time, you're going to have better numbers, so I'm going to pick you. I'm going to pick you to say, we're going to win with you and get to the Super Bowl. I got a better chance to win with you because you're better. You're more talented. Oh, shit. If you want to do that, it's Emmitt Smith because he's proven that. So it's Emmitt Smith. So, no, but I'm saying, but just now, you just said, if you had to pick one, you picked Eric Campbell. But time out. You said any back. Any back. You picked Eric you Campbell. You said any back. You said, so if you, no, no, no. You said any back. Why so you saying Smith? Because the conversation that we had previously wasn't about any back. Okay. The conversation that we were having previously was about Barry Sanders versus Emmett Smith. Okay. That's the conversation we Okay, were out having. of Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, you can pick. You had to, I'm to picking Emmett Smith. Why you pick Emmett Smith? Because I feel like I can do more with Emmett Smith. How, okay, so what I'm saying is there's no evidence to prove you can do more with Emma Smith because the only thing that Emma Smith did better than Barry Sanders was play longer. That's it. That's not true. Okay, pull the numbers up. He ran between the tackles better than Barry pull Sanders. Pull the numbers up. If you pull the numbers up, Emma Smith's numbers no, are better not. than Barry. No, he's not because in those So you mean to tell me that Barry Sanders' numbers, career yeah. numbers, are better than Emma Smith's career numbers? We're not, we can't listen. I'm asking you that. No, because you because you said me, you talking about you just told let me, me answer. You just told me to pull the numbers. Yeah, let me answer. And I said, yeah, pull the numbers. Let me answer. Let me finish. Okay. You ahead. said pull the numbers. Yeah. I said, go ahead, pull the numbers. I am. Emmett Smith's career numbers are gonna be better than Barry's. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if we're gonna pull numbers, I'm not gonna pull numbers from years when I ain't played. That don't make sense. That, hold, hold, that, don't, hold, that don't make no sense whatsoever. If I'm comparing me and you, and you play five years and I, and I play ten years, we're gonna compare to five to five, right? Fam, that ain't how that works. Hold up, I'm asking you a question. So you telling me I'm gonna compare some stuff like if like, me, once if again, me, talking about if me, if me and you play basketball, yeah, and we want, and then we're gonna get off this, and we want to compare numbers, yeah. To me and you, and we're pairing, but, and, we're, and we're pairing, we're comparing the careers at this point. No, we're comparing. No, 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 no we're no. not. Now, see, now you're trying to move. We're the comparing goal, players, not careers. Me, well, that's how you. That's how you would compare. No, <laughs> but, but that is the measuring stick. If I'm no, it's not. If I'm comparing two players' careers. No, I'm comparing two players, not careers. The two players. How do you compare the two players if I don't look at the career stats? Because what I'm saying. Like, you might play in an offense that caters to you. I might play in an offense in any sport. It might the the player, the actual player, that's why players get traded. Because, like, you know what? The way you play works better over here, and we can do more with you over here. Okay. They're not using you right. Okay. You are an all-star talent. What they got we to do put with you over here. And now, hold up. Okay, so now, when you were over here, they were like, man, you was trash. I can get, I can name 20,000 20, players that they have until they're like, over here, you was almost out the league. We trade you over here in this system. Oh, damn, look at Lamar Odom. Look what he's doing. Look at uh, what's his name? Dennis, Dennis, uh, not yeah, Dennis Schroeder. Look at um, what's the dude? Uh, he was at the league a couple years ago. Look at Ben Simmons right now. Over here, you were flourishing. Over here, you don't even play no more. It's systems. So I'm comparing player to play, not career to career. The career in in a team sport is very contingent upon what goes on around you. Actual player to player, meaning if so I take that let, individual let, let, player let, let, let and what he question. can do. Let me ask you real quick. Yeah. If I'm truly, and then we're literally getting off of this. If I can compare Barry Sanders to Emmitt Smith. The player to player. Time out. If I'm comparing Barry Sanders to Emmitt Smith. Yes, player to player. If I'm comparing, stop putting stop putting your sauce on it. Because no, you saying. keep saying longevity. That's why yeah, I said I that. ain't said nothing. I okay, am go ahead, go ahead. asking you a question. Okay. I am comparing Barry, Barry Sanders, Sanders to Emmitt Smith. Yes, sir. How do I do that comparison? What, what, what measuring stick am I going to use that I can tangibly hold and look at for that for for that comparison. Okay, and we have this believing, right? Go ahead, yeah. Sure. I know, you, can ahead. Fit, you can you can rebut, but I'm saying. I mean, this. I know what you're doing. But go no, ahead. No, no, no. I'm asking. I'm not gonna rebut at all. Okay. Well, what I was saying is, I would compare what that player meant to that franchise, what that player had going on around him, who he played with, and what he did with what he had, compared to. And not Emmitt Smith's not a bad player. He's not a. He's not a. He's not. A, now take take the Emmitt Smith and Barry Sanders. How you feel about it? Away. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know how you compare these. Two oh, players. because like I'm saying, as a, from a, from a coach's perspective, or from a a, a, a somebody's looking at the game as a, as a 
in a it whole, would be an analytical perspective. A, a, as a whole, I'm like, okay, well, if I had take if I had taken this guy and his ability and his talent and put him in this system, then who knows what he would have done? Not saying that he'd have done better, but I'm saying when he had less, when 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 he had less, look what he did with less. Look what he had to do to get his number. And he was still top ten for ten years. He was maybe he was I might I might want to say he was in the top five of of, of yards per uh in his ten year run. I want I I want to say he was number one for most of those ten years. With no line, with no quarterback, with no receivers, with a horrible defense, meaning my defense is bad, so we're always playing from behind, so we should be throwing it, but we our, our receivers are so bad, I'm running it, as opposed to M. Smith, where I got I got the playmaker out here. So ain't no it once I get past that linebacker, ain't nobody there. Ain't no ain't nobody sitting on on a run when I got when I got I, I, as a as a safety as a DB I can't sit on no run when I got Michael Irvin I, I gotta go double team that so he run a go route and I run that way I got number space it's the system it's the players that has a lot to do with what's going on so as a player individually I'm gonna take this guy over there now numbers you I, you can't you can't you know, give them they, give them they note on the numbers on the yeah that, that 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 counts but it can't be a determining factor because there's so many things that go into that. So for you, the determining factor is something that you can't tangibly prove. I can't prove it. You can prove that Barry Sanders did. Look, I can say you that there were no, there were probably maybe one or two other um, 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 all NBA, all NFL players on Barry Sanders' team his whole career. I can say for a fact that 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 Emma Smith had a team full of all NFL, a team full of Hall of Famers. So you telling me that you expect somebody with no Hall of Famers to have the same production as a, as a guy who had a team full of Hall of Famers. That's tangible, bro. You think that that that, that Troy Aikman being on the field has no effect on 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 Emma Smith getting the ball or being open or being able to catch a swing pass or being able to run up the hole or I got I got all-star that don't have no effect at all and Barry Sanders got Scott Mitchell? How do you know that Barry Sanders could run behind that line? Because he ran behind nothing. So you're telling me I can I can get these thousand these 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 thousand yard seasons behind guys who you've never and probably won't ever hear of again besides that one year they played or two years they played. You think I can't get that kind of production? I showed you at Oklahoma. Oh, uh, Oklahoma, right? I showed you Oklahoma what I could do when I had people in front of me. He was behind. He was behind Thurman Thomas. It, and when Thurman Thomas left, what did he do? He had a good season, then he left. And then he went right. So I showed he was, you. He was a better returner in Oklahoma State than, and then he was a running back though. But I showed you at Oklahoma when so I had. Hold running, on, I showed running, you when I had running, talent his, in front of you. His, his running style actually wasn't running behind blockers. So he kind of had a. An elusive running style where he thrived more when he didn't run behind his bro- his blockers. But so, <laughs> like, if you if you watch if you like would just watch a Detroit Lions game, yeah, Barry Sanders will roll into the fourth quarter with like twenty yards, thirty yards, and then he'll get a he he'll, he'll get a break and he'll break more for like ninety eight yards or he'll break more for like eighty yards because that was his running style. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying that was his running style. So, I watch football. And I this do is, too. And it's what well, you don't because I you, don't. You try to tell me Barry Sanders going to because you told me you don't like football. You told me I you, said you, I don't you like football. Me, now you told me you you thought it should be outlawed. So now, I would assume now this is that as, you didn't as an break adult down football like that. You went. To, so what you got? I next thought we moving on now. Cause I'm stuff. We can talk, we can talk football the whole part, bro. I'm not I'm not talking football with someone who doesn't like football. What you mean? So what you got next? We can talk about her, Haywood Jeffries and we can talk about football. What you got next? I don't like football. I, I don't like it now as an adult. <laughs> what you, uh, you got uh, next, man? Boy, this guy here, man. This, this, you can't throw numbers out the window. That's all I'm I didn't saying. say that. No, I, that's not what, what I said. That's not what I said. What you got next? I just want to stamp this right here. This I don't thing. want you to stamp it. Yeah, anything. how you going to tell me that? I'm going to stamp it. This guy over here said that Emma Smith is a better running back than Barry Smith. I did say that. That's all. And that's I all. We're going to leave it at that. I did, say, I, I did say that Emma Smith was a better back than Barry we can Smith. We can leave it at that. <laughs> um, something else happened, man. Rihanna, man. Rihanna did the Super Bowl, man. How did you feel about the uh, halftime show? Were you a fan of it? Uh, I felt like I felt like it was unfair. Why oh, was it unfair? Oh, not unfair. I think I felt like 
unfair? What was unfair about it? I felt like, okay, let me say, this is my assumption. My, this is totally my assumption. I could be wrong, but I don't think, I don't think that going into Super Bowl, in fact, I don't know. I don't know if it was a market employee. I don't know if they thought that would be going to do the Super Bowl performance. First off, I don't think she should have been called to do it in the first place. Let's start there. That's how I feel. So I can feel that way. It's okay. Secondly, going to do the Super Bowl pregnant, I don't know if that's particularly fair to the fans or to the performance. Well, they announced this over a year ago. Literally after the last Super Bowl, this was announced. Yeah. She was unpregnant. Yeah. She's four months pregnant. Yeah. So in the midst of all of this, she got pregnant again. Yeah. You already had too much marketing um, and everything out there for her not to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that, like, it's cool. I had no issue with the pregnant Rihanna uh, performance. I did. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I had an issue, not an issue. Why I felt like it wasn't fair. I didn't, I don't have an issue with it. I said I don't think because I don't think that the fans were expecting to have that type of a show. Meaning, what did you think you were getting? And we have to be honest and fair, not you and me, but just the world. When you heard Rihanna, what did you think? These big songs, these big performances. She she's known for having choreography and these type of things going on. You thought you were going to have a show. You didn't think you were going to have somebody standing in one spot doing a two-step for 13 minutes. Even though it's a short show, you still thought certain things, one. And then two, I think that there are other artists who are of a grander stature and scale that weren't, that haven't been on the Super Bowl, that probably should have B and not necessarily R and B, but maybe even rock or or another genre that would have given a better performance. So it sounds like you're saying pregnant or not, you feel like there are other artists who deserve that shot that would have given a bigger performance than Rihanna did, even if she wasn't pregnant. Is what uh, you're saying, but yeah, yeah, that too. I don't. I wouldn't say that Rihanna is 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 up there with the Beyonces of the world. So if you feel if you feel like Beyonce is a big enough name to do the Super Bowl, which she is, if you feel like Jennifer Lopez was a big enough name to do the the I don't. Super Bowl, I don't. Well, she was. You can't you can't take that she away. She did, from it, but I don't think she was big enough. She was big. This is Jennifer Lopez. I'm, She's okay. big enough. So, so that, and and the funny thing is, she doesn't she doesn't even sing all the songs. So Rihanna, first off. I don't think Rihanna wants to do this shit in the first place. I think she just chose to do it. A lot of her fans were excited about her doing it because they thought this meant that she was they were getting new music. Y'all ain't finna get another Rihanna album for the rest of y'all life. Rihanna finna sell makeup and have kids with ASAP Rocky. I don't think she wanted to do it, but she did it, and she was pregnant, bro. And she had at least 80 dancers out there for your choreography needs. And, you know, she let us know she had a fancy makeup out there, bro. She was in all red. She did a very pregnant twerk. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It was very lackluster, but I feel exactly, like exactly. I feel, but I feel like I mean, it was it was. I would rather see that than you know, I would rather see a Rihanna. It still was a enjoyable uh, Rihanna show. She, but, she did all the hits. So let's let's, let's go into that because this. Jay I'm mad nobody came out with it. That was some whole shit. This Jay Z. Rock Nation. Oh, we're moving the goalposts. No, 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 no. No, we're changing the conversation. I'm, changing. I'm, I'm staying here. No, we're changing. We're moving the Rock Nation. I'm, I'm telling you about this entire Super Bowl thing, and Rihanna's involved in it. This, to me, it's been, it hasn't been a success. Rihanna, J-Lo, The Weeknd, Shakira, none of those, those are not Super Bowl performing artists. Those, like, you can't frame it no type of way to make it sound like, if you, when you start Say talking. Say again. Rihanna. Uh, J Lo, Shakira, Weekend are not Super Bowl performing artists. The only person I don't agree with is Rian is I'm um, sorry is uh, J Lo. So let me, let me show you how how it stacks up against. You think that the Rolling Stones and 
the weekend are in the same conversation. Rolling Stones are all time great. Okay, do you think the Michael Jackson and stop Rihanna, it? Stop no, it. That's what I'm saying. Stop how, it. No, how I'm stopping it? This is Mike, no, bro. But it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Mike. Prince and uh, this, again, your name is all time Super Bowl. Great. Janet Jackson. Uh, uh, um. All right, so now we start getting to the Janet Jackson of the world. Now, now that's the set. I feel like that's you're dropping down the tier. Watch, watch this. How many albums does How many albums does Rihanna have? One, two. I can count three, but I'm not the biggest Rihanna. Fan. Me either. But you, you putting, and that's what I was saying. You're putting. They're putting artists who have four and three and four albums. Oh, and not even that. Over a ten years peri period against. Even if you say Jan Jackson's a step below, Jan Jackson's been having albums since the 80s, bro. I like how this rolls full circle because now you're bringing up longevity. No, I'm bringing up no, production. Production. Whoa, 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 production. Me, time out, time out. Let yeah. me finish. Yeah. It's running full circle. Yeah. Because in this longevity, you're talking about the production of said longevity. Am yeah. I correct? This is music, though. I can drop. Listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to rebut everything until I finish. Bro. Yeah, go ahead. It's not like I'm saying I dropped just 10 albums. Yeah. No, I, I've consistently dropped 10 years of fire. Yeah. Well, Rihanna pulls up and she might not have the 10 albums of fire. Yeah. But like when Rihanna drops, it's cult like almost just like it is when Beyonce drops or, 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 uh, you know, Prince or. I disagree. Okay. Nobody disagree because it's cult like with her fans, not with everybody. But that's the whole, I mean, everybody's not a Beyonce fan though. No, but 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 Rolling Stones. Rolling Everybody's not a Rolling Stone fan. That's what I'm saying. The reason why Rolling Stones and Michael Jackson and Janet Jack and these other artists in, that that fit in the Super Bowl mold have that cult following is because they have kids, parents, grandparents have all been a part of their movement. Whereas Rihanna is is condensed. That's not true. What you mean? No, because it's kids that are part of Rihanna movement. There are young adults our age. There are people older than us. That's not true. That's and Rihanna and Rihanna has touched broader audiences because of the extended industry she got into with her Fenty uh with her with her Fenty company. So right my music, now, there, let me finish. There are people who didn't get introduced and to Rihanna and yeah. to Fenty Beauty yeah. and then oh she sings too and now they're a fan of both Fenty Beauty and her music so you can't say that's a stretch that's not a stretch it that 100% one, is. is not a stretch so you, so you can actually you can you can actually say yeah she 100% is big enough and should be on the stage now if you said the performance was lackluster I can agree with that. The performance that's, that's was lackluster, but I'm not gonna say that she shouldn't have been on that stage. That's what I'm saying. But you, just, you, that's what I'm saying. The performance just was lackluster. That's what I'm saying. Michael Jackson could have went up there and stomped his feet six times, and it wouldn't have been lackluster. Yeah, but Michael Jackson also wouldn't be a pregnant female. Okay, uh, Janet Jackson could have went up there and stomped her feet three times. And it wouldn't have been lackluster. I'm pretty sure if Janet Jackson was pregnant, she wouldn't have had the same simple Janet Jackson show that she normally has. Same. You didn't hear what I said. I said she came up there and stomped her three three times. Yeah. And it wouldn't have been lackluster because. You know why? Because Janet Jackson would have pulled a song that our, your, that our grandmothers remember. She'd have pulled a song and not not remember as I went. I remember. Our 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 my, my, hold on, our mother hold on. my grandmother never listened to Jackson. Our mothers yeah. our mothers can remember when Let's Wait a While came out and how old they were. Were they were in their twenties or their or teens or they can remember that. But they can remember when Miss You Much and that they can remember when no, Rhythm Nation. No, they can no, remember these times no song, all the way up no to the song that Janet Jackson sings came out when my mom was in her teens. No, nah, she probably in her twenties. Was not in her twenties, bro. Your mom wasn't in the twenties and eighties? Nah, my mom is almost. My mom's pushing seventy, homie. My mom is almost seventy, and in the eighties. How old is Janet Jackson? Tell me, she's in her fifties. She's, she's in her sixties. Janet is in her what? She's sixty. Yeah. She's sixty because her her marriage her marriage deal was she had to give her her sheik a son mm. before. So I think she's she's the fifty or sixty. Mm. I said she's how, in how, the 50s, homie. how old is Michael Jackson? How old would he be? Since Mike Mike would have been in the sixties, right? He would have just been pushing 60, I believe, sir. I don't know. We could. I mean, I'll Janet sure. Jackson is like, you know, auntie music right now, bro. John Jackson is in a, is a, might, might, might be 60. She's I don't 60. know, bro. I mean, you can Google it. We but I'm just it. saying, I, 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 I believe that uh, she she belonged on that stage and that venue. It might have been a lackluster show because she was pregnant. You didn't get the normal Rihanna show you would have gotten if she was not pregnant. What's your phone tell you about 56. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. She's almost 60. Like I'm, Oh. Well, she's almost, she's in her 50s. Okay. She's almost right. 60. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, and you got to think about this, she also put out music when she was like 18, so she was young when she started. But <laughs> Rihanna was too. Rihanna was 25 when she dropped her first album. Rihanna probably was like 19 or 20. How old is right now? Shit, I don't know. She's probably in the late 20s, early 30s, if that. Hold up. So, you you make my point then. What, you're, what do you mean? I'm not saying, making any point. You're, you're saying that she has a short period of time that she's been, like. Bro, what, fam, what, fam, Rihanna is damn the, the hottest female in the industry under Beyonce. I don't think so. Shit. In, in R&B? I don't, she, but she's not even R. It's like a pop act. Or in pop, I don't even think you caught it R and B. You think she's a pop? She thinks she's the second highest pop act. You think like? Let me let me, let me make it fair. I don't, I don't think, think Katy Perry should have been on that Super Bowl either. Though. So I think I can't I say think, that. I think they're in the same. They because they, no, they don't have, they don't have they don't have the Super Bowl is something that's about it's a traditional thing. It's something that's made. It's it's a huge production. It's meant to encompass encompass a large range of people, right? I don't think that, and this is, I can, you know, you can call me wrong, whatever, I don't care. I mean, it's, it's fair. I don't I don't care, but it's fair for you to say I'm wrong. It's an opinion. But I'm saying that when we look back on it in 20 years, we're going to be like, who? We're going to be like, oh, yeah. It's like the weekend? Oh, yeah. We ain't, but when ain't like Michael Jackson, Prince, the Rolling Stones, uh, like, it's, it's a different connotation. Like, and I understand some years are going to hit, some years are going to miss. Right, but like some of these, like this last, he went. This, <laughs> this guy went out and said it's not enough diversity, right, in the West College, and then came out, and then one of the biggest Afro Latino cities in the country didn't have an Afro Latino artist on the show. When that was in Miami, yeah. Who had on show in Miami? Shakira and J, and J- Lo. In a in a city that has. A lot of Afro Latino and or just Latino superstars, world renowned superstars. You ain't even bring one of them out. I thought Bad Bunny came up. Bad Bunny is from West Color, bro. Bad where, Bunny's he's from. What is where's where? I thought not from Miami. I thought he's a Latin guy. He's not from Miami. You don't have to be from Miami. Time out. Time out. You don't have to be from Miami to represent a Latin culture no, in but, Miami. No, but if I'm if I when I was in Atlanta, I shall brought I shall brought Big Boy out, didn't I? Yeah. Like but you, all, but, but you also had Travis Scott headline. Yeah, but what I'm saying is another one that's in the headline. But uh I can agree with that. What I'm saying what I'm saying is my thing is like like But this. if you're telling me that I'm in a, a I'm in a Latin city, Miami is a Latin city, right? It's one of the largest Latin cities. One of the largest yeah. Latin cities, yeah. right? With a I, cultural history of music. A time out. Yeah. Did I not have a Latin representation in that Super Bowl? I'm asking. Bad Bunny's not black either. I didn't. We didn't say black. We said Latin. I said Afro Latino. I said I said you were in one of the largest Afro Latino co- cities in the country. Uh, in the country, and you didn't have any Afro. And your thing about right, so diversity. Time out, time out. Yeah. Give, give me an Afro Latino artist that you, that you feel like uh, is big enough to be on that stage. Uh, I can't name none, but it might be my ignorance. Yeah, my my Afro Latino knowledge isn't, isn't up to par. I have oh, to okay. I have to go look and see because I don't know about my top because I'm not a big. I would assume Afro. though. I would assume though. Yeah. If you're talking about being on that stage mm-hmm. where you can cross, uh, you can cross, you know, all all walks of life where people know this person and there's notoriety. Yeah. Do you have one Afro Latina that comes to mind? I don't listen to I don't listen to Afro Latino. All right, um, cool. So I would, so you asked the wrong person. But what? But well, okay. What so about, I'm saying. But what about just the Latin presence, though? If I'm in Miami, you can say Miami, and I'm not arguing it is one of the largest Afro Latina places. That's cool. Yeah. But just a Latin presence. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I do think that there was a good job done to represent that Latin presence. Period. While you're in Miami, I'm a hundred percent sure. I'm a hundred percent sure. Man, I might be five thousand percent sure. Because from the conversations I've had with other Latinos, Latin ex people, that when they think of their music, they don't think of Shakira or like J Lo, a hundred percent through two thousand percent. I think that's why Bad Bunny was there. They love I, Bad I, Bunny. I, I, I think you know, Bad Bunny is like the biggest name. He's, Bad Bunny is like Bad yeah, Bunny yeah, yeah. makes albums that are not even in English. Okay, yet right. and still he gets on English networks and he sings his 
Spanish music. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Bad yeah, Bunny yeah. is like Bad Bunny. Is, he's he's, he's that here. dude. He's that so dude. you had Bad he Bunny. He should have headlined more. I, he he would have been a more respectable headliner than Shakira and what's called. You're not gonna have you're not gonna have an artist uh, for 17 minutes. 17 minutes to go. Now nah, talk your stuff. Keep going. I'm asking for 17 minutes. No, 13. Keep going. All right. Do you think that the NFL would have signed off to have an artist up there for 13 minutes? Uh, singing nothing but Spanish to this almost predominantly white uh, uh, audience. He speaks. He has. He has English in his songs too. I ain't never heard of uh, English bad. And again, I don't listen that much Bad Bunny, but I've listened to enough. There's always in Spanish. I don't know. Now, what if saying. I told you that at the All Star Game, in the whitest of white, 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 white cities, Bad Bunny rapped. The headliner would be who? In the whitest of white, white, white cities. Yeah. Give me a white city. Utah. South Lake City, sorry. It's going to be in Utah this year. Yeah. Who, who would you think would be a headline? It's the NBA, so it's definitely going to be somebody black. Uh, In Utah, South Lake City. It's definitely it. It's definitely going to be somebody black. So what if I told you it was two Nigerians? Somebody black. Oh, hold up. What if I told you it was two Nigerians? Ooh, is, it, is it Burner Boy? Yes. Oh, man. Hold up, man. I'm fucking Burner Boy. You, you, finna ha- you finna have... There's going to be a lot of scamming going on that night, but you want to know the difference is? What's the difference? I can understand some of it. Because you might have closer relation to it. I'm just saying, bro. I agree with you. No, I'm saying, the, but, but the other but I'm piece is you can you can the NBA. Outside of, but you you but, can. But it's Salt Lake City, bro. Like if any time you wanted to come and bring in your country or your you know your not so dark, this would be a perfect time to do it. This yeah, would be. A, but but who's gonna be there? Like I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have set. <laughs> <laughs> watch, watch. I'm gonna have said Mormon artist uh, playing his ukulele in front of all these rappers no. with these Miami Cubans on. But I can't. Oh, no. But 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 I can't. But listen, what I'm saying those rappers and guys with those Cubans on, they don't mean nothing to the big picture, bro. The big picture is is Sony and 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 uh, and Coke and oh, see, now you're talking. Hold on, and, and 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 these big companies, yeah, right? Now you're talking. And so now, so now, if I know for a fact that now country, bringing it full circle. Up, now, if I know for a fact that country music outsells all this, yeah. So and and I and I have this 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 Lily White um, platform. Yep. It's no problem to bring bring the, bring the Dixie Chicks or to bring uh what's his name Tennessee Whiskey Dude to bring him and to perform. Well, that's why they perform in NASCAR. <laughs> but what I'm saying is the NBA. Could have they could have they could have they could have came and, and went for the month the hundred percent money play and went and got these other guys to okay well it's Utah this is the spirit of this this community Utah is not known for their Nigerian influence and in their community we're gonna stay true to the community and play music and have performance but the M- but the NBA is bringing their hip hop influence and that's why you're gonna get a burner boy performing. At NBA yeah. All Star Game in the middle of Utah, you think Coke give a fuck about the hip hop experience? I think Coke gives a fuck about Burner Boy and the name that he is internationally. Yes, you think that Coke gives a fuck about the hip hop Burner Boy when I can have the same exact numbers with three um, country artists? Burner Boy is a big is a big name though because now, 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 now you're crossing waters. Bro. He said so is country. Burner Boy is crossing some waters that your local that not your local Burner Boy is crossing some 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 waters that your Country Western Grammy Award winning guitarist isn't crossing. So what you're saying is one hundred percent, and you can't say that. So, my, so my, my question is, your consensus or you're implying that Coke and these larger companies couldn't have found three X that were not that that were that were um, white that could have been of equal or more earning power of Burner Boy. Burner I'm, Boy. I'm not I'm not sure how we got here, but I would think that. These companies are also in line with the culture of said game. I just asked you. And what, I, I think mean, the you, NBA. I'm, I've answered it <laughs> a couple of times. The NBA has a culture of hip hop. You have Burner Boy, one of the biggest international acts there is right now. So yes, Coke or whoever else that you're trying to bring up. Yeah, okay, cool. My product is going to be seen across the waters. I think that Burner Boy is a bigger international uh, name. Then maybe I don't know one of your hottest country western singers simply because Burner Boy is hot in the states. He's hot in Africa. He's hot in London. He's hot in Europe. Like you know, what I'm saying is is all these places internationally. Burner Boy 100 percent is hot. Now the Dixie Chicks in their prime was hot in the states. I don't know if they was hot in Africa. I don't know if they was hot in Europe. You know what I'm saying? Well, 
I mean, that's that's an assumption. I'm just saying, that, no, but it's fact that Burner Boy is hot in Africa. Yeah, it's a fact. And it, he's hot in also, the States. Huh, he's hot in Europe. Like, that's a fact, bro. It's, it's also a fact that you're not sure if the Dixie Chicks were hot in Europe, right? I'm not sure. Oh, but, yeah, it's but a I fact. know for a fact that this guy is. So, because you know that this information and your unprivileged um, that information, that makes this information. Uh, well, you don't even know about Afro Latinas. I'm but asking you a question. You can name one. I'm asking you a question. Uh, you, you, you're trying to divert my question. I'm not diverting at all. I've asked you the question already. No, because uh, and, and I'm, that's why I'm geeking over here. Because I, I almost, hit, question, I almost hit you with the with the with the dub move, but I'm I'm gonna ask I'm your question, gonna, man. Ask your question, man. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I be sick and tired of this penis swinging content. What you mean? No, I, I, I ain't said nothing. No, bro. Ask, I'm, I'm telling you, ask the question. I'm 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 just I'm just I'm just I'm going back to what you just said. Just now, I'm I'm re, you know. I'm taking it in, listening, because you know when I ask you a question, how, JB, how, how, how you gonna tell me how to? What, let I'm me, just let asking me, you to ask I, the question. But let me cook, let me cook, man. Ask the question. Let man. me cook, man. You know, I, I asked you a question about something, and it was a very direct question. And you told me you didn't give me a yes no answer. You gave me your version of how you saw it, which is great and wonderful. I had no problem with it. It just it just tickled me to see that happen. What I'm saying is, you don't you like you said you don't know if you don't. You don't know what Dixie Chicks numbers were in that time. Dixie were, Chicks weren't in that international act. Why not? How do you know? They weren't. How do you know? They weren't an international act. How do you they, know? They weren't an international act in Africa. How do you know? Because they weren't. Bro, do you know that country music is huge in Africa, bro? I understand that so country how do you music know? is huge in Africa. So, so how are you going to say they the weren't Dixie huge in Africa? Chicks, the Dixie Chicks weren't as big as Burner Boy is in Africa. But you don't know. I do know. How? I know that. How many, how how the Dixie Chicks? So did, did because it's it, because it's been talked about in music that Burner Boy is one of the bigger artists that we've seen outside of the the Michael Jacksons, the Princes, and all of those who have crossed international stardom. But, That's fact. But and the fact is that you have no idea what Dixie Chicks' influence was in Africa. You're right. I don't. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, as somebody of African descent, I can tell you for a fact that. The, the the records my mom and her and her contemporary listened to were Jim Reeves and Conway Twitty. Okay, you know what I'm saying, as well as Jane Brown. So there's a huge there's a huge uh, um, country music fan base outside of the U.S. Now I didn't I, argue that though. I, I, I never argued that. I'm saying, but you have you don't know, and I don't know, but you don't know for 100. percent But you don't know. Say, so don't put the sauce on it. So if, okay, if we both don't know. So how you? But you? But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not deflating the Dixie Chicks. The Dixie Chicks's. The Dixie Chicks's influence on um the world. You're saying no, nah, they weren't that big. I'm like, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> it was huge. Again, you're taking bits and pieces of it. Of what I said. So what I really said was. Burner Boy is an international success. Yeah, and you so talk, this time, time out. You talked about all of these uh, Coke, these sponsors now. Yeah, and they're they're pick of the litter. Yeah, if I'm in Utah, yeah, I can pick a country western guy. I can do all of this. I can do my promotion. All I said was, I don't think that there is a country music star that is as big as Burner Boy is internationally right now. I mentioned something. That's not me saying that country music stars aren't international stars. But I'm so so what we're saying is that in your opinion, you feel like Burner Boy was they, they, there's not a there's not a country star that has the international success that Burner Boy has right now. Is that am I, am I correct? As the name, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And that's fair. That's fair. And I'm just saying that I don't know. But I'm also saying that I'm also saying that I don't think that if Coke or if one of these, if, if the three big, if the four biggest sponsors of the NBA said, man, we want to have X, Y, Z, and this, that would have happened. Of I, course I, would. I think. If, if, if they wanted a country star, of course they would have yeah. a country star. Yeah. I think, I think that what you're saying has validity to it because I don't think any of the, I think that the industry that goes around the sub the sub industry, not the the big companies, but the smaller companies or the the the, the day to day stuff that's happening in Utah, had what those people are dictating more why you're having a burner boy more than uh, the NBA because w w just throwing a name it. Rick Ross is saying Utah man, I ain't going to Utah. I don't care who is throwing. I ain't going to Utah. That my my ancillary monies is coming from this, 
talk about my walkthroughs and my 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 my, my group stuff and my and my my, my partnerships that I'm gonna have come through. They ain't making no money in Utah, so I ain't going to Utah. When they say Atlanta, I'm like yeah yeah I'm doing Atlanta because I know I'm gonna make my front end and my back end. I can get my little my 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 up and coming stars up under me to make they so and so. My other businesses I have on the side that are that are doing things as far as my limos and my so and sos and they can all make money because we're familiar with with this market. But Utah. Now, so I get an international star who, when he comes in, all he's getting, oh, his main focus is getting that big bop. And I might have a couple of walkthroughs, but I'm not so concerned as much as a local or as much as a United States artist is with going to a market like that to get paid. I think that's more di- a dictation of who gets on that show than us saying, oh, I want international look. I just think that it's a committee just like it is for the NFL. And this committee chose Burner Boy. Uh, for for the view for the viewership, I don't think the actual local, the actual local walk through environment of people and their music culture dictated who that person would be. Oh, so you think that they don't? You think that they don't have an idea that? I think I think I think it was looked at on a bigger scale with with some of your bigger companies. I don't think it was looked at on a local scale with some of the local industry. I think it was looked at on a bigger scale of of what the NBA is as a whole, mm. what our culture is, mm. and 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 who we market to, mm. and that that culture and and that's how they chose this young man. I mean, that sounds good. I'm man. not saying that there's no truth to what you're saying, but I'm saying when you look at when they went to Cleveland and they did a hometown guy, who got up there? I don't remember. I'll tell you who got up there. Yeah. One Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. Machine Gun Kelly did a rock song, which, you know, I'm not a rock guy. I listened to the song. It was a decent song. I had no issue with it. And, you know, it was just like, who's that? Why why is he performing at this at this halftime? Well, he didn't even do halftime. He did like this big old pregame thing. And it was like, uh, who was this guy? It was in Cleveland, right? They were in Cleveland. The home of Machine Gun Kelly. When they were at me, who was the Miami artist came out? All Star? Man, I don't know who came out. When you're in Houston, you're gonna have Houston artists, right? No one said that. I'm just asking. I'm just I mean, it's pretty much assumed that when you go to a major city, you're gonna have somebody from that city. Well, come you out. brought up Miami, so I thought you knew. Who was Miami? Miami, Miami, they didn't have nobody, that's what I'm trying to say. So there was no performer in Miami? Not for not well, I might be switching a little bit, but in the Super yeah, Bowl. You're switching it up. In the Super Bowl, we ain't talking about Super Bowl, we're yeah, talking yeah. about the uh, All Star. Yeah. Well, All Star Miami, I can't think that far back. Who, who who was here in Houston? In Houston, I know Bumby performed for sure. Slim Thug, everybody did. Pa- Paul Wall had something. I want to say, did, did, didn't they do a, med- a medley? That sounded like the rodeo. No, I don't, somebody, I don't, I'm talking don't, about for the All Star game last time. They, they, they did a medley. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Are you talking about the actual official halftime show? No, I'm talking about because you know they have they have. Four, now, I know they have concert series. No, they have throughout. four shows. Like they have a pregame show. Yeah. They have the, the the singer. Like Post Malone is doing something too. They have the the. They got the Post Malone's doing somewhere in Utah? Utah. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense. You know they have they have a, a pregame. Oh, so you didn't sell post. They have a they have a main, and I think they have a what you call it. It's like four. They have like five performers. They do. Those are the main performers that are associated with N- NBA. Well, time out, time out. You know what? what? You're right. No, I don't. I don't want to. You know, another that, fifteen minute conversation about what? It. Some, nobody from Houston did nothing that year. Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, I was, I was, I, was I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even talk about that. Oh, okay. You think Paul Malone's white boy? They had, had to put some white in there. Oh man, I don't want to be that guy. I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like it. I don't know. I'm not against it or for. I'm just like I'm not against it at all. I have no issue with Post Malone. Me either. I have I no do. issue I do. with Man I music. do. I do. I do. You got an issue with everything? No, I'm saying. What but, you drinking right there? Oh, I don't want to tell the people what I got. It's, tell them what the, the man, they, they You got dull lemonade. See, man, I ain't. I ain't no, I know. It's Dolly. It's is that, Dolly. Is that, is that a better lemonade than a simply lemonade? It's about the same. I, I, I'm not a fan of having all the little uh, lemonade sperm in my sperm. I mean, you know. lemonade sperm in yeah. your sperm. It's called Pope, and it's from fresh squeezed lemons. Yeah, but they can drink it out. They can if they want. They to. want to. If they want you to feel like. Uh, they want you to feel like um, you, you got little sperm in your mouth, man. No, 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 no. Little sperm. Okay. Hey, man, what you think about all these UFOs? I think it's. Um, 
I want to say something about Post Malone, bro. And by the way, you were wrong when you when you argued me down in my kitchen about how the, the, the balloon it? entered on the East Coast. And You're I right. and I knew you were wrong. But I chose not to engage in the argument. I knew I one hundred percent, one thousand percent knew <laughs> that the balloon entered on the West Coast. I knew that shit. Yeah. I one hundred percent knew it came over uh, through the West Coast because it flew over Middle America, Wyoming, and all of that. Which I told you, and I said they chose not to shoot it down over Middle America, and then they shot it down over the Carolinas. What I say, like, man, that's the East Coast. You know, it's the East Coast. It came in over there. It just barely touched the United States. Well, I was well, like, no, yeah. it flew over the entire United States. And I told you certain sites it flew over. Now, and now, then you argued me down about it, answered through the East Coast. And I just said, okay. And, and I said, I, no, I didn't argue down. Yes, you did. You argued I said, down. no, I said what I had read. I said what I had read. And you know what? You were right. It did come over, Scott. You were right. But you know what? That's not it. That doesn't matter. What you mean? Right right or wrong doesn't matter. I would like to know how you feel about these UFOs. I don't know, man. Are they UFOs, bro? I don't know. Well, technically, there are UFOs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Technically. I don't don't mean, and when I say I'm not like some of these crazy conspiracy theorists, I don't believe that little green Martians who are parked behind Saturn chose to like deploy small balloons over the United States for a week. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. But technically, anything that is unidentifiable flying in an object is a UFO. So how do you feel about these things? I feel, what do you think their purpose is? I think that it's layered. It's layered, and it's it's, it's layered in the way that's being um, the way that it's being told to the people, and the way that it's being you know because like just simply saying it's a UFO is almost like like why are you saying it? Not you. I'm saying why why are you presenting it like that? Because that's what it is, though. Yeah, but like one hundred percent. It's not. It's not the media or the government's fault that most people are uneducated on what a UFO is. No, it's a hundred percent. It is a hundred and twenty-five percent fault the media and the government's fault that most not. How, if I if I perpetuate, do you remember what they did in the fifties with the UFOs? Right? You are you familiar with how they? projected that oh a UFO is da, 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 and and, da, and that made it seem like in the world of the world uh, they, they promoted well that was Hollywood though that's what I'm saying this is Hollywood and the government okay promoted this this way of thinking to when so that now 50 years later when you hear UFO the the the, the normal response in the United States is to think an alien uh, under, under, like we've been we've been inundated with this, this information so we can't say the government is, is, is not. The, yeah, it's definitely their fault. It's a hundred. Well, the they didn't come out and be like, nah, man. They, but this the is government just TV. is the government isn't coming out saying that. I think the like the news, the news. People exactly. Saying, the government is saying now they will government. When you listen to when the government speaks, mm-hmm. they will say that this balloon is a balloon. Uh, could be a weather balloon. It could be something else. Uh, even with the thing that they shot over recently over Alaska, yeah. and they did say it's an unidentified flying object yes now i don't know how smart you have to be to understand that the ufo was an acronym for unidentified flying object yeah is that the right word acronym oh uh, no it may be now there is a different classification if you get deep into it where you have different classifications of ufos where you have ufos that are built on world and ufos that are built off world that's right now i don't know why the government has that specific classification yeah maybe they know something we don't know I think that that's why I had this conversation yesterday about about the same, like you just said, about um, the way we word things and the way we say, it. and it, it came out boot cuts and and um, and bell bottoms, right? You you came out with boot cuts and bell bottoms? No, no, no. I saw somebody with some bell bottoms on, and they're like, "Now I'm boot cuts." I was like, "Huh?" Like, "No," nah, because bell bottoms are this, and boot. I'm like, "It's the same thing." Like. A UFO, you're right. A UFO encompasses, it's the big thing that encompasses all these things, right? And then when you start breaking it down and getting more in, more detailed, oh, you have on-world, off-world, you have, you know, you, you can break down the classifications more. But the general public, and which, and we have to always think the general public doesn't have, the general public doesn't always have the need to know the difference between what uh, on world or off world UFO are right? You know, if I work, if yeah, I but the general public should know that UFO is an unidentified flying out. So it's anything. If I build a, if me and you build a a, a rocket ship in our back in my backyard right yeah, now, yeah, and then we go fly that bitch to Miami, yeah. When it's seen, yeah, that's a UFO. 
but yeah, I I know that. But the general public generally wouldn't look at it in that sense because we've been told, we've been propagated, we've been propagandized, if that's a word, that UFO means a spaceship. All right, cool. Yeah. With that being, how do you feel about it? Do, do, you, do you feel like it's a... a, a uh, if I was saying... I was do you feel saying, like it's a distraction? Do you feel like someone's really trying to spy on us? Is China trying to get some intel? Is it all just a hoax? What do you think? I think... I mean, I have an issue with the word distraction, but um, not from you, but just when people use it in general. But I think it's just... I think it's, it's, I think it's progress. I think it's, it's, it's progress in technology and... Just as as we move along in this world, in this digital world, and, and and there are things that were commonplace that we didn't we weren't privy of, and we're going to become more and more privy of more and more things because there's more and more ways for us to get data and and see things. So things that happen like we've been seeing chemtrails for the last thirty years, and people are just now be like, oh man, well, you know. They're shooting rockets like they've been they, you've been. they've been doing that forever. You know what I'm saying? It's just that we haven't we haven't had the access and the the ability to actually go and be like, da, 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 da. oh, that's it. That's what that is. Or you know, just it's so, like right now we're under attack by aliens because if they saw um, a uh, a chemical explosion. What was that? Cleveland. Or in, uh, what was it? Somebody at? said we were under attack by aliens because uh, of the train uh, derailment. Yeah, a hundred because of the look. Because somebody, somebody said that we were under attack by aliens because of the train uh, derailment. Hundred percent because of the look. Because you see the picture, you see the explosion, and like, oh, that's that's the what's called that's that's the aliens attacking. Like literally, I've this seen is that the first time I've heard that take. I've that seen aliens are attacking us because of a train derailment. I've seen it a hundred times. I've not heard. I've seen it. Way more than ten times. You oh, gotta stop talking the, to these people. It's not talking; it's seeing it. What did you see it on? I've seen it on Reddit. I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it on Instagram. I've seen it on. I've seen. I've seen it. You gotta stop. <laughs> you gotta stop engaging. But that's, that's, that, but that's, you gotta stop engaging in thumb conversations with these people. I'm not on, talking. I'm just seeing these fa- people on Reddit who believe that 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 um the the train derailment was an attack by aliens. But it's but I mean my left brain guys are that's, like I don't, I don't know that's not far fetched, bro. That 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 line of thinking is not far fetched because we live in the same society where people think like shit. I need to have a gun to walk to the store. So how is that that far off of thinking? Like well, I mean when we live in a society where people are getting robbed daily, when have not it, people not get robbed daily, bro? And people have always had weapons to protect themselves. Not no. Bro. So what, if you're telling me the what same, gun did Jesus have? you're telling me the same line of thinking. That is so stupid. What gun? What gun did the so apostles have? Me, so what, you, what, what weapon did the apostles walk, walk, walk around the with? The who? The apostles. What weapons did they walk around with? They didn't have guns then. But what weapons? I said what weapons did they walk around with? They had like slingshots back then. They probably no, had a sword or something. Ask your question. Something. What weapon has it been documented? Come on. I mean, I'll I'll let, let, me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. No. Let me finish. Just let me finish my statement. No more. Let me finish. What weapon is it documented that the apostles walked around with? I don't know, but have you ever heard a a, a a story about the apostle? Oh, you know, when it got real, so and so pulled a sword out. I don't know, but I'm just asking the question. It's not. I don't know. It's it's, 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 it's Have you ever heard no, this my story? answers? I don't know because oh. I don't. I don't know about these stories. I haven't heard these stories. Oh, you haven't heard so these stories. My what I'm saying is I don't know. So you've never heard these stories. What are you saying? My answers. I don't know. What? I know that every apostle was an apostle. Some of them were warriors at one time. One of them was actually someone who went around beheading Christians, and I forget who was who and what was what. What I'm saying is, if you're asking me, have I ever read a story in the Bible where it was uh, some shit going down? And the apostle pulled out his weapon and was like, hey, man, let's go. You want the smoke? No, I've not heard that. So I've heard stories about Cain slewing Abel. I've heard stories about other things inside the, the Bible. Yeah. We know that the Crusades were, were pretty much Templar knights protecting Christians on their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. We know that's fact. And we know those Templar knights were just warriors for hire. So we're not going to say that there isn't, we, I'm not going to sit here and say that the same people who believe aliens attacked Earth yeah. and blew up a train in, in Ohio. Yeah, I think so. Are the sure. same people yeah. who believe I need a gun 
to go to the store it's not to what protect I said. myself from from leaving the house and coming back. That's, that's not, not what I that's said. Not, that's not the same. I said that. That's not even the same reference point. No, I didn't say that. I said that. You definitely no. 100 percent said. I said it's th- not that far fetched thinking. If you can, if somebody can think that, if, like th- these these ways of thinking that one person is laugh at. The same way that you'll laugh at one certain way of thinking, somebody will laugh at that way because it, to them it's ridiculous. Like you think it's ridiculous. It I'm is, not. I'm not saying that either one of us right. See, you think it's it ridiculous, is. It is. But ridiculous. I can tell you for a it fact. Is, okay, it is ridiculous to think that the aliens are bum in Cleveland. Why is it so? Why is it ridiculous to think I can't walk to the store without a gun? Then you can. You can't believe that. I'm asking you why. Why is why is one ridiculous and one not? You're right. It, it, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that you're wrong, bro. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm. am t- agreeing with you. I'm yeah. saying okay. I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying that. I'm, I'm just saying that. The, the look of it from what we've been propagated, from what we've been. I keep saying that word. I don't know if it's right. From what we've been shown and told in in over the last forty years, and if I see, if I've been told, if I've been shown a thousand images of this thing right here, and it, and this image has equal to this. And now I see this, and then I, I equate the two. That's not ridiculous. All right, cool. All right, now back to my original question. Yeah, was how do you feel about and it? I, and I said it. I I started to say again. I'm like, man, it's like the way it's being told, the way that it's being pushed out there, is 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 not responsible. Like I said, it's not responsible because it's 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 it's, it's like leveled. It's like it's almost like the person who, 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 who went to Harvard, who's from the country, and then come back to the country, and then talks to the people a certain type of way, knowing that certain words are going to be kind of out of their wheelhouse, and it's going to evoke certain emotions or certain ways out of them, and so, and and then when they act that way, they play off of that. You know, that's what it seemed like to me. It's like, I, it's a word. I can't think of the word with that. What it is. I don't want to say gaslighting on one of these new what's called, but there's a word for that. But it's like, it's 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 like I said, like I said the first time, it's just some of these things have been happening for the longest, but we haven't had a way to quantify or even see them. And now we can see them. And, you know, if I don't have a knowledge of these things, I'm going to go by what I know and call it what I know. And then the people who have an understanding of it are going to be like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But people are like, man, how you, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, really, it's like the unknowledgeable and knowledgeable are not meeting in the middle. One is standing over here and one is standing over there. Bell yeah. bottoms versus boot cuts. Yeah. There is a difference, but I understand your logic. Bell bottoms and boot cuts, in theory, are the same thing. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. bell bottoms are much larger towards the bottom than boot cuts. Boot cuts are slightly larger. But in theory, they're the same. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree. Though. I agree they're different, but they're not totally different. In fact, I'm same saying... Same concept. Same concept. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I was saying it's the same concept. It's just one is 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 a it's a new twist on an old concept. But you rock bell bottoms? I ain't never walk... I ain't never rock bell bottoms. I know I wouldn't. What do you mean? Like from the knee down or from the ankle down? Well, from... <laughs> The ankle down a boot cut from the knee down is bell bottoms. So what I'm saying is it would have to be from the knee down to be bell bottoms. So no, nah, I wouldn't I wouldn't rock either. No. Cause I feel like like that whole like I said I feel like you've had boot cut jeans before. I ain't never worn a boots. I mean, it, okay, so if I had a pair of boots, I wore them Jody's style and 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 flip flip my pants into the boots. I ain't never had I have never in my lifetime put on a pair of cowboy boots. Mm. I don't think I ever will too. Mm. I, I, I love I, cowboy boots. I've owned several pair of cowboy boots. Um, so I've owned boot cut jeans before. Yeah, I've, I've never see because in my mind, and this is this, what's this example of the the informed and the non informed speaking. When I think of boots, first thing I think about is like some some Tims or some work boots. Mm-mm. I don't even think about cowboy boots. Now, when you say boots, first thing I think of is cowboy boots. Second thing I think of is like polo boot style or Timberland style. See, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, cowboy boys don't even, but see, you can't even say work boots because I can get some cowboy style work boots, which are my favorite when I work, uh, like when I was working in the plants. Oh, you're talking about the, like the, uh, I always had the cowboy style work boots. Yeah, I don't think people wear them. <laughs> what? You don't think what? 
<laughs> nah, them, them, them some big old boots, man. Them yeah. big old boots, man. The cowboy. cowboy boots, the cowboy, the cowboy, the cowboy style work boots. They make your feet look big. Nah, they just they literally cowboy boots with, with with the work bottoms, right? They're literally not the work bottom you think of. So they're literally cowboy boots, um, with the same type of bottom that cowboy boots are, except they're slip resistant, and you got steel toe, and you can get them uh, pointed or square, just like you can any other cowboy boot. I'm not familiar with cowboy boot. I know. I, not, yeah, yeah. Not. I, I'm just thinking, when I think about the cowboy style work boots, I think about the kind that come out right here, right? Like They're what, cowboy boots. Ca- okay, they have the, ca- the the ones that I'm thinking of, like I said, on the form, talking to the form, are the ones that have the cowboy yeah. top and the, like the Timberland, just just the just the, the heel and the is like the work, like the construction side work boot bottom. Yeah, I wouldn't say they like the doubled up Timberland style. I would say that they're literally cowboy style soles, but they're slip resistant and rubber. So, okay, they probably are a little bit thicker than your traditional cowboy. Well, they are thicker than your traditional cowboy boot sole. Um, but it's pretty much the same boot. Like you, you can have some cowboy boots and then some cowboy style work boots. And you can sit them side by side, and they pretty much look the same. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I never put, I've never in my lifetime wanted. Have you actually? I have to ask my mom. How many day. pair of work boots have you had in your life? Like legit steel toe. I need work boots. Probably yeah, four or five. Oh, okay. I'm trying to say I never had no work boots on or something. That ain't what I said. Bro. I don't know. I feel like, like you, too deep into it. What you mean? What? How you? Guys, how many work? <laughs> I mean, I've never known you to work in the industry where you have to have steel toes though. Uh, and that's not a knock. That's just that, that, that's not an industry. I've work. I've never known you to work in the industry where you have to have like legit work boots. Steel toe boots. Yeah, steel toe, composite toe, whatever toe you yeah, want. Yeah. Like work boots. Like I go work at a plant or. I ain't gonna talk. I ain't gonna really say about like work at man. So I, I don't. I'm not to... telling you to say you. I'm, no, just I'm just saying, saying I've but, never but, known you to have an industrial type job. But I'm which saying is not for, a knock. For the last three years, one of my industries is I have to work work boots. Oh, I'm supposed to wear work boots. <laughs> you probably wear. <laughs> you probably or, wear tennis shoes though. Sometimes, yeah. Why? Why not? Yeah, you go wear the tennis shoes until uh, you drop some and chop off the first two toes. I know. I ain't gonna drop nothing. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, you're right. You ain't gonna drop nothing. That's how. That's how you accidents that. Don't, <laughs> accidents don't happen in Young James Boogie's life. Man, I try not to. Now, I um, I mean, I don't want. Yeah, I can say that. I try to like sometimes in any job, whether there's work boots involved or not, I try to assess whether this thing might chop my toes off. And if there's a chance it might chop my toes off, I'm gonna think like, you know what? I don't know if I sign up for this. I don't think I should be doing this. Man. I'm like, I, let me get somebody who likes taking the risk of getting their, show, their toes chopped off to do this. Yep. I'll go do this paperwork or something. I've worked in the industry where uh, I've had to have the work boots on and 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 the uh, the the steel toe or safety toe boot has yeah. saved my foot a couple of times. Yeah. And it was me being the most cautious of cautious. Hey, look, sometimes people around you do shit. Yeah, that too. That too. And uh, that that happened to me once. Someone around me mishandled some things, hmm. and uh, a sin, a cylinder like part came tumbling down the aisle, unbeknownst to me. Yeah, and I turned around, and it was like bloop, and hit my boot. Yeah, and if it wasn't for the safety toe, said toes would be crushed. I, you know, every day I go to work. I just look for that first scratch or that first, you know, I'm going to get a scratch or something. And once I get a first scratch, I'm like, okay, boom. That that usually reminds me to get on note, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, yeah, you can have something happen to you. So I'm, I'm really, I'm kind of, I kind of, I'm happy when that first, uh, when that first scratch, I'm like, okay, dang, okay, boom, boom, let's go, okay, whatever, you know. Some other people be like, oh, man, I got my scratch. Oh, man, I got to jam my finger. I jam my finger or the thing. I'm like, oh, okay, boom. Got myself. Okay, boom. Let's go. You know. Now I know. I know I'm, I'm on note. I, I, that's interesting, though. What you said that though, because accidents happen to everybody, man. Some people are accident prone, though. Some people aren't. It do seem like I don't believe. I don't believe in uh, good or bad luck. Yeah, I don't. But I do think that some people are magnets for just like bad luck I think yeah I think sometimes it like I, I think it's, I think it's clumsy, clum, clumsiness but you know I think it's also a perspective of like like sometimes p- 
people be having their mind on other stuff, man. And so, like, they become magnets for bad stuff happening to them because they, they, in some other aspect of life, or no, they, their mind is, ne- is never on what they're doing. Did you say it's also all like perception? Is that what you just said? Mm-mm. Oh, so I think it's perception too because I think sometimes the stuff can happen and, you know, people be like, I just got bad luck because yeah. something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you have, like, I try to be positive. So something can happen. Yeah. And instead of me saying, damn, I got bad luck, yeah. I kind of look at, all right, what happened? All right, cool. Well, how can I prevent that next time? Yeah. And, you know, what can I do for this not to happen again? And I kind of analyze, like, all right, well, what did I do for that situation to even happen? Yeah. What have you, what, what, what have you done? Nothing? Oh, sometimes you just don't do nothing. Sometimes you just, I didn't do, I didn't do anything to cause that situation. Yeah. There was no way I could prevent said situation. Yeah. Hey, yo, it just was a, it just was a bad deal for that day or for that week or whatever, and you 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 see it and you move on. Like you can't harp on it. Me, me harping on that situation isn't gonna change it. Yeah. So you know, I just try to take what I can take from it, and then move on. Some people be like, God damn it, I got bad luck again. God damn it, my wife left me again for the tenth time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You might be picking the wrong one, bro. You might need to stop getting married. Yeah, that too. That too. Married. See, and see, that's what I would analyze. I would say, yeah. yo, yo, I ain't getting married no more. Or, I, yeah, I, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Some, I don't know. Like a lot of things. Like I said, it only. It sometimes. Sometimes it's just the way we look at things. Like I said, maybe it's perception. Like normally, when something happens, that's just the catalyst of. It's, it's the crescendo of a situation, right? Like. This thing might happen. It might be, you know, it might be uh, crescendoed, or it might it might peak here, and this thing happens, and it might be it might be life shattering. But there was lots of shit that happened up to get there. Yeah, you, you know saw you saw the red flags. Not even not even for that thing. Not I'm saying this thing might happen right here. It might be blindsiding you. But there were things that were happening. You know, what I'm saying going to that point that might not even connected with that. There might be some over here, like, and it, you know. And it, you see it, you're like, oh, damn, this, that, and the other, you know what I'm saying? So, A lot of times when I when I go through a difficult process, mm-hmm. whatever, whether if it's with a job, personal life, whatever, once I hit the peak of that of that situation, when I look back at stuff, I'm like, oh, man, I, I kind of, there were some telltale signs. Yeah. You know, like when, when finally that girl uh, stabs you in your right arm Yeah. and you got to go to the ER and then you, you, you choose to leave? Like, you know, well. Uh, she did slice my tires three months ago. She did try to put some arsenic in my drink last year. <laughs> uh, she did try to, you know, smother me that one night, and she said it was a kink. See, I, see, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a different note. I'll be on some, like, like, I don't know if you believe in, like, you know, universe and, you know, us all being intertwined and connected and energy is just being flowing. You know, we're all just energy flowing through here, however it goes. So like no, I ain't got that high yet, but I'm nah, not knocking it though. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying like sometimes like it 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 hits you in different ways. You might be late to this, or somebody might you know it might be something that's like totally. You might be a different person. It might be a, you might it might be you see a dog get hit in the street like dang, you know what I'm saying? And that energy is in the air. So you have to be able to like, damn, okay, shit, it's out there now. You know I, no, no, I can 100% agree with that. Like, uh, when I was in the dating game, I was going out on a date with a young lady and like uh, I had so many roadblocks that night. Like, like just weird nonsense happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. My car ain't start for a minute and then, you yeah. know, got the car to start and, you know, some other like weird shit happened to kind of, yeah. you know, deter me a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, man, it's too much bad shit going on with this bro. Let me go ahead and just... Nah, it's not gonna work out. All right, yep, yep, yep. So no, I man, in my car was I wouldn't. I'd have, that's I, yeah. If my car don't start, man. That's I'm not even. They, they call that janky. But see, now nah, at the time, <laughs> though, you know, at the time it was the car I had, and it was always doing that. It, you know, if you never had a car with rules, then you never lived. Yeah, and you know, I just thought it was one of the rules I didn't follow when starting said car. Oh, okay, I think and, my car got rules now. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, you know, if you never had a car with rules, you never lived. Uh, man, that might be it, bro, unless you got something else, man. Oh, it's something else to happen, man. Okay. Uh, okay, Kyrie Irving got traded. 
Kevin Durant got traded. Yeah, I saw that coming. Um, Suns wanted both of them, but it ain't work out that way. They uh, traded homie to Dallas out of spite because they ain't because they ain't want to trade him to L.A. That's funny. That makes sense though. Yeah, it do make sense. You oh. can't, yeah, you can't tell. I can't. You can't tell me what to send you. No, I send you. What I want to send you. No, I don't know about that one, but um, I would say I go all the way back to say um, uh, the beard came out and said. I don't look so crazy no more now, do I? About what? About him leaving the Nets. Oh, I don't think he was crazy when he left the Nets. No, I'm not saying you did, but I'm saying there was there was a large contingency of people who were like, you know, blaming him and saying that he he not he's this that and other blah 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 blah. And it's like, man, I saw this the day I got there. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, that's why I had to get out of there. This day. And then sometimes this has got less to do with Harden and more to do with just. Just people living so much in the moment and not living in. If you think about it, man, the Nets have been a shit show for some some decades, bro. The Nets have been like, and there's certain things that's been certain. Like the Nets have been like, they was a shit show when they went and got Paul Pierce and, and Kevin Garnett and them. Like that ain't made no sense, man. I, I feel like the last time the Nets truly was good was when they was in New Jersey. I don't. I feel like them New Jersey teams won the shit show with Jason Kidd. And uh, Vince Carter and Vince Kenny Carter. Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that that New Jersey Nets organization was fire. I feel like once they moved uh, to Brooklyn, and uh, it was the J Kid. To me, I think it was. It wasn't that they, they were still because like you got to think they 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 didn't have some pieces over. They didn't have some pieces over there, bro. They didn't have some pieces over there for some. I mean, over the last fifty years, they didn't have Drazen Petrovic. Even though he, he passed away, but they had uh, Derek Coleman, they had Kenny Anderson, they didn't have some pieces over there, you know, and just kind of pissed it away, different kind of ways, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just like, who did who did Jason Kidd and them lose to? They lost to the Lakers, I believe. Oh yeah, well, it was not from the West, yeah. whoever it was, yeah. But I mean, I think it was more Jason Kidd being that stabilizing force, and like he's a if you know everywhere he goes, you know, no matter what's going on, and this is a good segue to get out of here, but a lot of times people look at the immediate contributors to a situation and be like, oh, it's this. You know what I mean? Well, he's a basketball player, but like you got a whole GM office and you got a whole you got you got two different offices that have to work in cohesion with you to make this work. If they if they if they own some other stuff, you know what I'm saying, you gotta have somebody it takes somebody like Jason Kidd, like it take a great point guard. To be able to not only be on the court, but get off the court and convince, hey, come on, Vince, man. I know these niggas tripping, man, but I, I got you, bro. If you just we win this ring, man, they ain't got nothing to say. We can get out of here with the ring, you know. Like, you got Jason Rich, You got Richard Jefferson, Vince Carter, Kenyon Martin, Aaron Williams, Jason Kidd, and a couple. Like, you know what I'm saying? That really ain't no... Finals team, bro, but they went twice. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you got Jason Kidd and Vince Carter. Damn, yeah. Vince that, Carter played a long ass time. Mm-hmm. That was that was that was like that was his first. That was his second deal. He was Toronto for four. I mean, he was Air Canada. So by the yeah. time he got to New Jersey, he was in his prime. Mm-hmm. You don't think that was prime Vince Carter? I think it was prime in Canada. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like that wasn't prime Vince Carter in New Jersey. He still yeah, yeah. was. Gorilla dunking on people, and yeah, then you—you yeah. know what I'm talking about. You had Jason Kidd, who probably is the original point guard outside of Isaiah. Jason Kidd is a great. That's a good, what I'm he's saying. A good point guard. I want to say point guard. Eh, I mean, you know, and I and I am a fan of Chris Paul, mm-hmm. but I think if you're calling Chris Paul the point guard, mm-hmm. you know, one of Oakland's finest is definitely a point guard as well. Can't shoot though, man. He couldn't shoot. I mean, I mean. Mm-hmm. Chris Paul just now start learning how to shoot. I'm not gonna do COVID. See, you don't even like Chris Paul. I, 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 so that mean I can't tell this man was twenty some a game in, in in with the Hornets, man. And he wasn't. He was he was getting it from the perimeter. He was getting it all kind of ways. But yeah, I just I'm still mad at Chris Paul because he got hurt that year. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not against Chris Paul. I'm I like I like Chris Paul. I'm not a fan of Chris Paul. He, he nice. I'm a fan of Chris Paul. I'm a, look. So first off. I'm a fan. I'm just mad that he got hurt the one season we probably could have beat Golden State. I'm a fan of probably M- every NBA player. No, I'm not. 
I'm I'm a fan of it because I understand what to, to get there, and I see, well, I try to see why they got there. Like, okay, this is all we got to jump. Or, oh, but but that's jump. respect. I respect every player in the NBA because even the sorriest of sorriest people who play in the NBA can mm-hmm. do shit I can never do. So I respect them for getting to the NBA. I wouldn't go that far. But I am not a fan of every player in the NBA. I wouldn't go far to say you do shit I can never hey, it's, do. It's, it's some dudes in the league right now will run circles around you. And now. They, and they can't even now, score. Now. And they can't score four buckets. Now. But, I mean. Boogie in his prime. It's some dudes that Boogie prime, prime Boogie yeah. will get circles ran around him. Uh, and they, like, sit next to the, to the, to the Gatorade picture every game that's not true 100%. because the guy the guy it was some guys who was 100%. sitting by the gator gatorade who i was giving buckets to so hey, what's several that, several what, times what's that, what's that one dude who played uh for the spurs who only could go right for the spurs yeah he was a point guard for the spurs and we was trying to figure out how the hell he stayed in the league so many years bro the Spurs? The Spurs. the san antonio spurs the san antonio guy. spurs i don't bro. even sound like they don't even sound like some pop would do yeah, he, you think popular player can go one way only? Bro, I'm telling you, bro. The San Antonio Spurs. It wasn't it wasn't Sham God. I don't know why I want to say Sham God. Sham God would run circles around you. It wasn't Sham God. Why is what's wrong? What no uh, do you, I don't think you, you forget how much of a problem I would I, I, I God not, Sham I am. God God Sham God would run puny boogie would run circles around you. know I'm I'm taller than God, God Sham God. You know that right. The height don't mean nothing. Oh, okay. It got nothing to do with it. But longevity means something, but height don't mean nothing. Yes, longevity means something. Height doesn't mean anything. Okay. <laughs> you know I'm taller than him, right? I'm just saying, you know just I'm taller than him. There are a lot of people that were taller than Allen Iverson, and what happened? Yeah, he was an all-time great. I right there. But I'm saying, Sham God, not one, not an all-time great. Two, like... He was an all-time college great, though. Or street legend. Which one is it? He, he got all-time great behind his name at some point. No, nah, he had a move, man. That's really it. Oh, man. Like he wasn't no twenty a game at, at movie Wake Forest, a bunch of them, bro. What move do you have that's named after you? The Boogie, bro. Uh, I don't nobody know what that. Okay, <laughs> you think so? When last time they did a documentary about you? Oh no, no, I ain't. Yeah, doc- yeah, doc- yeah. Doc- but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, who the fuck was this dude, bro? It's gonna come to us. I, th- I feel like it's gonna like when the at morale when that when that dude was was trying to be a player coach and was too old to be hooping. It was somebody who was behind him. He only could go right. Like, literally, his job was to cross court and then just pass the ball. For the Spurs. For the Spurs. I don't know. That's, that's tough, man. I, I don't got to do that. I'm, I'm going to find it out. I'm going to find it out, bro. He wasn't no starter, though, bro. He was like, you know, third to the last on the bench, and he would get a little bit of PT. Greg Pop is Greg Pop is known for, 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 like for locking players. Like, he had stack. He had – um. Jay, um, the dude, what's the name? Jay, uh, the guy from Houston who, uh, number, Jay, he had Simmons, he had um, Deontay, Dejounte Murray, he had he he had he had Ginobili. Like I'm, he, I'm gonna uh, find his name out, bro. It was it was horrible, bro. We used to talk about it. He ha- he's known for taking players who can be wild as fuck. Matter of fact, the only reason why I even know about this player is because you pointed him out because you told me you gave him the business in college. I'm gonna figure it out. Oh, Jack Warren. Who? Jack Vaughn. Was it Jack Vaughn? Did Jack Vaughn play point guard? Yeah, but he can he played the coach for the Nets right now. He can go left and right. It wasn't Jack Vaughn. I don't Did know. you give Jack Vaughn the business in college? I've given a bunch of people business. Did you college. give Jack Vaughn the business? I've in given Jack Vaughn the business a couple times in uh, college. Do we have video proof? <sighs> Probably not. Yeah, Probably not. Okay. It didn't happen if you didn't see it. Hey, and that's how people feel, man. Some people do feel. That's how people feel man. I don't feel that way, but some people do feel that way. I just like look, man. I I'm I'm still a I'm still a bucket. I'm a bucket. I'm a bucket. I'm a man. It's unbelievable. I'll be mad at myself right now. I'll be like, damn, man. Maybe I should have just went back to school and because I'm a bucket. I'm a bucket, bucket, like bucket, like psh, count it, count it. Count it, man. I be no, I be, I be mad. I mad. I, I I am jealous of the cameras that they have nowadays, and I'm just I be in the wrong gyms, bro. I be in the wrong gym because I I have not been to a gym in the last five years that I ain't set on fire, bro. I'm talking about well, maybe maybe one or two. Every time I see your your gym footage of you, yeah, of you, yeah, it's fuzzy. When I see gym footage of 
you know, the refereeing and the philanthropy. How you say it? Philanthropy? Yeah. When I see those 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 picks and vids, you know, food drive picks, uh, when I see Coach Boogie picks, you know. Because oh, I'm taking the picture. That's why. As, and that's what I'm saying. It'd be clear as fuck. No, because no, no, normally. But when, when I see Boogie is back videos of dunking, it'd be fuzzy. So what I'm saying is, call me next time you want to make a Boogie is back video. Man, we can what time we can go right now to the we can go right Call me when we you can wanna, go right now. Let me finish. Let okay, me finish. I'm not go. prepared to go to that. No, I, I, you can I go on the camera have, for 15 minutes and watch me I have, light this gym around the corner on fire. I have there's a gym around the corner? LA Fitness around the corner, yeah. I don't have an LA Fitness membership. I do. You can get you can hop on with me, man. You can just, I got a membership. Pause. You can hop on with me. Pause. You can you can follow me in. Okay, I, I like that. I got I got a uh, a buddy pass, a permanent buddy pass, man, for everybody. What I'm saying is, um, oh, I could just go up though. I mean, do I you like, do you like LA that. Fitness? Yeah, it's live, bro. It's live. Mm. Are they 24 hours? No, I don't, nah. no, no gym 24 hours no more. No, nah, the one around Hero Fitness is. All right, that's a that's a shameless first. plugs. I shouldn't be giving these shameless. That's a plugs. workout gym only though. Twenty four hours to uh, twenty four. Uh, no, uh, no, I think they went back. I think the one in Greenway Plaza went back to twenty four hours. Show, I don't know. I think so because they sent me some shit. The one in here, the one in there, that's not the here yeah. or there. I don't. I'm saying uh, LA Fitness got everything. <laughs> what I'm saying is yeah. next time, not 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 today, because I got to go to the Burger Bodega. Now tomorrow I'm down. Man, I gotta go eat, man. What you mean? Oh, you have you have you have a meeting at the Bodega. bodega. My meeting at the Burger Bodega is yeah. with a burger. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then I'm coming back here and I'm gonna do some more uh, uh, some more work. I say we in. I sh- it's, no, 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 I be fuzzy though for real because I don't be thinking to myself I'm for the record. I don't even have my. I be that be my. I don't be my phone. I be my, my my backup phone. I be having it with me and I go in the gym to work. I go work out and nobody in there, so I just go shoot some film. But I'm gonna start filming on the good phone so they can see. Nah, fuck the phone. We can we can we can you know we can get some action cams. We can strap a rig to your chest and you can get some action cam. Yeah, I can get some much. some far away so we, it'd be clear we ain't, ain't gonna do for it. our 16 shot you podcast do is this, viewers all you gotta do is where come. they can see live in 4K all that Boogie is back. All you gotta do is just come to a gym and sit in the corner and be in awe of the shit I do. Nah, I'm not gonna sit in the corner. I need to be courtside with all my gear no. So I can document all of it. They ain't going let want, you in the gym with all that, bro. This they are. I, I got a press pass. They ain't let you, no, they ain't let you know in the gym with that. I ain't going to let me in the gym. Because they, they ain't. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying it for me. I'm just saying what the gyms be saying. Because I've been had that idea to go in the gym with this shit. But they're like, it's too, many, it's too many other people in there that have, you have to get a sign release. And they have to get a sign release and that type of shit. So you can't. They got a, a, a size of camera. It's only a size of camera you can bring into the gym. I got a size of camera I can bring. Into yeah, the gym. and so shit. What you mean? I'm gonna yeah. bring it in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna see. Li- I'm gonna see Boogie. Ba- I want to see Boogie. I, I never left. To Dunkin- be I want to see Boogie dunking on boys. I want to see nah, Boogie with the crossover. I, I want to see Boogie logo Boogie. I want to see, see that. The dunking part, man. I, I, I might you might see one or two. Uh, one. You might see one of those. Uh, boo. Might be see one of those. Because these knees coming down, it ain't, it ain't, it's going off too. But the, 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 the boom, boom, that part right there, man, that's that, that, that high impact on, on, on the, on the patella tendon is not what it used to be. But besides that, shit, I gonna get buckets, man. All right. So we've learned a lot today. We've I learned a that boogie, boogie is is Barry Sanders over Emmett. Okay. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm Emmett over Barry. Uh, we found out that Boogie feels like the government and and the news networks need to be more responsible when they're reporting about these flying objects over United States airspace. I can agree with that as well. Uh, bell bottoms and boot cut are the same and different at the same time. And Boogie is back, folks. He's never left. He's back. <laughs> and we're going to get Boogie dunking on a young 23-year-old in 4K. And we're gonna dump that in on you guys. Are you want to embarrass by like that, man? And also that Boogie enjoys Dole Lemonade over Simply Lemonade. This has been another riveting episode of the 16. You know what? We never even you never even asked me the most important question of the day. What's the name of this podcast? I'm glad you asked. Now <laughs> let's begin the story. <laughs> I ain't your average cat. I slap box with my ears. Ever since the fifth grade, kickball with tires.
made a mini force hot, man. ripped off for planes. Money now, nah, bro, it's, it's comfortable. Look, you need to find God. Shit, I got on shorts. That's why I robbed the deacon house. Man, quit your life. I did it. Now, what were you texting, making it hot for you? Yes, yes, it's yes. Tony it Mac birthday, us. man. It was us. It was the 16 Shots podcast with Young James Boogie. Hey, y'all, Doug. I'm Jimmy, how you Tony Tony I'm gonna happy tell birthday, you Tony mean. Mac. And happy birthday, Tony Mac. Great, Tony. Hey. And we out. No, 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 no. Tell my instruments to get the bitches, man. Tony Mac.